You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Buzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Hemlock Grove After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Hemlock Grove After Show. <laughs> we haven't done that in a while. Hey, everybody, Bing is for doing, and here we are doing another amazing After Buzz TV after show for your favorite show and our favorite show. It's Hemlock Grove, season one, episode eight, Catabasis. I am your host, Sean O, and I'm joined here in studio with four beautiful women. Let's start to my right. Hi, everyone. I'm Marissa Serafini. Hey, guys, I'm Tiana Hobson. Hi, I'm JJ Jurgens. And over on the couch, we have our very special guest tonight from the show who plays Marie Godfrey. It's Lori Fortier. Hi. Yay. Nice to be here. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks for having me. And we have a number of awesome topics to talk about tonight in this very confusing episode where Roman is happened. discovering himself and discovering answers in his little spirit journey. <laughs> We're going to be talking about Roman's dream. We're going to also talk about... Uh, Norman getting closer to Olivia. We're going to discuss Price protecting his Ouroboros pet project. And uh, we will also be talking about Chasseur and Olivia and Norman um, and their, what's going on with them. And we're also going to be interviewing Lori. So let's go, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started. So anyway, uh, this whole episode pretty much... Roman, you know, he's, he starts off, right? He's, he's obviously crazed from what happened last episode, right? It, it didn't, it almost, it didn't seem like, okay, after he steps out of Ashley's place, it doesn't seem like he quite was, I don't know, he, he threw up, right? Mm -hmm. So it's yeah. almost like he was sickened with himself. What did you guys think? I think he just has a conscience, you know? He, find, he feels bad, you know? He does have emotions, and then after literally, you know, raping a girl, that he felt bad. I see it as kind of these two different parts of him, so it's almost like then he's back now as Roman and kind of disgusted, yeah, by what this other, but I don't know that he's fully in control of that other part, but so then he, that caused him to throw up. Yeah, I think we Disgust. talked about it a little bit last week, too, about how, you know, we think that maybe there's the two sides to him where there's whatever's inside of him that's the evil, dark mm -hmm. doer, and then there's the Roman, the human, who still has his feelings and is aware of his actions. What about you, Lori? What do you think? What's going on with Roman? Yeah, I think he's he's exploring his dark side. He's going under. He's going underground into the underworld, and and, and he's really he's at conflict. There's a war going on within him. That's what I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah, definitely. It, it's really weird. Like we've been talking about it for the last previous episodes that we've been doing on these podcasts, and there's sometimes where he's like super confident. We've talked about him being he's popular in school, and then. Last episode, the, one of the last things he's saying is, I'm ugly, tell me I'm ugly, to, to Ashley. And then we have him go, and he's he's going on a rampage, sniffing coke <laughs> while he's driving. And he, drinking. And drinking. And he compels the guard over at the White Tower. He ends up over there at Godfrey Institute. And uh, he... I think I don't think him losing blood is helping him <laughs> at all, right? No. So he, he goes in there. He grabs a blowtorch. Was it already on while it was in the locker? It kind of seemed like it, right? <laughs> he, he got it on really it, fast. Yeah. He, yeah. Knows, he knows how to work a blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> but before that, we see him walking by a bunch of like boxes, crates filled with animals or whatever kind of creatures mm -hmm. they're working on, experimenting on at the White Tower. And there was one, it looked like a chimp. But the sign was, uh, it said G1408. And I kind of went like a alert, little nerded out on this, but um, like lost. You know how numbers always mean something else on that show. So uh, the only thing I could get was 1408 adds up to four, the number 13. Oh. 
that's superstition. That's an un unlucky number. That's yeah. the only thing I got from that. Marissa, you're <laughs> really paying attention. Yeah. yeah. I, love that. <laughs> I completely missed you're all of that. You're picking up on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and just like looking at the rocks, really. I love it. <laughs> wow, that's so crazy that you picked that up. That it adds up to 13. That's cool. It reminds me of that one John Cusack film, 1408. I think, uh, yeah. And, uh, he's, and he did that too. He was this like, it adds Samuel up to 13. Samuel L. Jackson yeah. movie. That's the one I yeah. was thinking of. Oh, yeah. that's the same one. Yeah, 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 yeah it's that, the same one. That one. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so he, he ends up, Price lets him go over to where the project is, right? He looks inside, Price injects him, bam, he's in a coma. Okay, so when he looked into that box, did anyone else think a giant snake was going to come jumping out? <laughs> no, just me. Okay, because I was, I was really scared to watch that part because I was like, I don't know what's going to happen. And, and I know that the Ouroboros, you know, the snake and my fear of snakes, so that scared me, but... Guess I'm alone on that <laughs> prediction there. Aren't you glad it didn't happen? I'm so yeah. glad it didn't happen, but part of me was very scared. I wanted to see what was inside, but I'm actually kind of glad that we didn't get to see what was inside yet. Lori, there's a scene where um, you're um, where where um, Marie is sitting down with uh, Letha, and you guys are having a little fun moment. It's lighthearted, right? Sure. And then uh, Marie finds out that Roman is in a coma, how does Marie feel like in that instant? Because it's just a, such a quick scene. It happens so fast. So quick, yeah. Well, first of all, the fact that Olivia is calling my husband, I think, catches my attention <laughs> right off the bat. But, uh, you know, it's my daughter's cousin, best friend. So, you know, I think in that moment, yeah, it's surprising. It's shocking. Member of the family in a coma. How's that going to mm, play out? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I really want I've been this I've been itching to ask this of you. So does Marie know that Norman and Olivia are having an affair? I know it's such a good question. <laughs> I think I think it's one of those things that uh, you have a suspicion and uh, and and maybe you, you feel it in your gut, but you 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 know, you don't want to uh, you don't want to rock that boat, you know, for f fear of whatever consequence. You know, I think there are times when I, I just choose to look the other way. I'm, you know, you got to weigh what's more important. So along so. that lines, is it true that Roman is really Norman's son in his dream? Or we'll find this out later? Maybe. Or is it, you know, <laughs> could it could be. It could be. But I, I don't know that. Okay. I, Marie, do not know that. <laughs> okay. I don't want to know that. Uh, that, yeah, that's that's such a revelation that mm -hmm. we actually discover within Roman's dream. And of course, it's, yeah, sure, it's a revelation. It's like we didn't consider that before, but at the same time, it's like, couldn't his subconscious just be playing a trick on him, you know? Like, we, we don't really know if it's correct or valid mm -hmm. information because it's not the real world. It's his subconscious, right? Yeah. But the thing about subconscious that yeah. they are resolutions to real life situations. Right. And that's how that come people, out your dream. Yeah, people mm -hmm. figure out um, problems and yeah. it's problem solving. So I think there is some reality there. Mm -hmm. so, so, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I, yeah, I think so too. <laughs> I, I actually went over my notes from last week and I had written in there, like, could Norman be Roman's father? Mm. Mm. And I didn't say it. Mm. And now I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt for that Did one. You? But yeah. I believe you. Yeah, I was like, I believe you. I'll go get my notes, guys. No. Uh, but as I was like, True. once that happens, like, oh my gosh, that makes so much sense. Like, I mean, mm. I honestly, from what we've seen of how JR reacted to Juliet's death and stuff, it seemed like not a lot of time passed really between the death of one child and the birth of Roman. Mm -hmm. And so that's what kind of makes me believe that it might be true that Norman is Roman's father. Plus their names are way too similar. Yeah, yeah. yeah that is yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> I think like it also sister. explains the, her, Olivia's um, like feelings towards each one of them as well, and like her like possessive pulls mm -hmm. towards both of those guys. Yeah, and I think if you were to believe that, then it explains the undercurrent of tension that exists when Letha and Roman are together. Yeah. There is this sexual tension, and who knows whose baby that is? Mm -hmm. Angel? You know, Angel. we don't know mm -hmm. yet. <laughs> Yeah, I, you know what, I, I don't know if you got, uh, I was kind of looking at my notes, so I don't know if anybody said something like this, but I wanted this, this came to me today when I was re-watching the episode and I was taking notes, I was like, okay, we know that Roman compels people all the time, and he tells people, like, like he did with Ashley, 
no one came over, you were alone tonight, you know, you want to go to sleep, you just had a bad dream, or whatever he said to her, right? Mm-hmm. What if he came to Letha in her room and he compelled her and he was like in a messed up state because he's all coked out or drunk or whatever, and then he compels her after he does the deed and he's like, there was nobody here, it was just, you were having a bad dream, mm-hmm. it was an angel that came, la la la. What do you guys think about that? I like that. Yeah. That- mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. that could very well be true and could mm-hmm. play out. I feel like I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> so, but I like that. Yeah. <laughs> get there. Thank you, Lori. It's really insightful. Because ding, 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 ding. <laughs> we really don't know, right? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm, I, again, I was like taking down some notes and I was thinking to myself, you know what? Like, there's everybody has bad in them on this show. Pretty much everybody is doing something. No one's innocent, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what if. Okay, like Lisa, Lisa Willoughby's dead, and then ugh, I keep forgetting the cheerleader in the beginning. Brooke, Brooke. Brooke, uh, Brooke dies, right? And then Francis is dead, right? So we got people dropping like flies mm-hmm. all over the place. Mm-hmm. And what if it's not just one person that's killing them? What if it's multiple people, multiple main characters are taking these people out and they're doing it for different mm-hmm. reasons? What do you got? Thoughts? Anybody? I could yeah. mm-hmm. very well be true. <laughs> I, uh, I can't say anything. Says the person yeah. who's watched it. Yeah, like, who's watched everything. <laughs> and I'm I, I have more to add to that, but I'm going to wait till we're talking about Chaucer. Okay. Because uh, it's, it's something that she said that kind of put me down the same track as you. And I have a tiny thing to add about the baby situation with Letha. Um, when they're showing Roman as a baby in, this, in the dream, he doesn't look like a sweet little baby. You know, he looks obviously like a mix of something else, the dragon or whatever evil's there. And then also when um, Francis was talking about the baby inside Letha, he was what was referring to what, not being like a sweet little baby either. So it would make sense, your theory of him impregnating her and it being kind of a... Mi- like he was as a baby. Yeah, like but this the, monstrous child. Yeah, but the thing is about um, Roman, when he was a baby, he was born with the call. That's what we saw. That's why he <clears> looked <throat> a little bit deformed. He, that's just the call What's on a, his head. What is that, a call? A yeah. call is like call. An, an inner call. membrane of the uterus that like is still um, is attached to the baby when it's born. Oh. It could be attached around the head or the entire body. It really looks like yeah. if you were to take saran wrap and wrap it around a right. baby. Yeah. And, and it, it does exist. It's a real thing. Yeah. Hmm. So how do, do, okay. do they do they normally, does it just come off naturally after a while? Or yeah, do they I think have it's to? just very rare that some, be, some babies are born with it still attached. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See. But can I just go back to my character? Oh, I don't think that I'm yes. evil. <laughs> I, don't think I think I'm either. the non-evil yeah. yes. member. Of the family, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Do you think there's a darker <laughs> side of Maria, though? That I think everybody has like a dark say. side. Yeah. Mm. I think we just haven't found it yet. It, yours yeah. is. I think it hasn't come out yet. Uh, no, it did come out. It was <laughs> oh, get the like, canary <laughs> paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All caps means I don't want to talk about this again. <laughs> yeah. Get your shh together. <laughs> Can I swear on the show? Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Um, that I actually noticed something really interesting during this episode, too. It's Roman's in a coma. Everybody around him is kind of like banding together and getting along much better. Mm-hmm. You see Olivia and Shelley at his bedside, and they're holding hands like over his body, and they're both like just, they just want him to pull out of it. It was really fascinating. Mm-hmm. Thoughts? I think it's like family disasters, you know, the stuff like that that occurs. That that's usually like a catalyst for um, families coming closer together and just hoping the best and bonding. I mean, it even brought Norman and Olivia back to being very close together too. And Olivia was actually nice to Peter. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. Peter yeah, was like was. the mm-hmm. only one she was willing to actually invite into her house. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when Chasseur mm-hmm. came. I don't want to go into Chaucer yet, (laughs) but when she came, she was just like, what do you want? (laughs) That's not a question. (laughs) As if we haven't met. So in in the dream, we see Shelly, but she looks completely different, obviously. And it's not, it's obviously not even the same actress. It's not played by Nicole Boyvin. Uh, And what do you think she represents in the dream to Roman? I kind of took her as being his spiritual guide Mm -hmm. through this journey and... You know, in this world, no one really has, like, those faults that Shelley has, like, the physical, you know, 
in the real world, you know, Shelly clearly has some deformities on her. And here it's like you see her for who she truly is, which is a beautiful girl who's insightful and knows her brother so well that she's the per she's the only person who could get him in here and who can get him out safely. Didn't she also say, I'm appearing how you see me? Yeah. So yeah. I think it's like I how, you how, how you make me see yeah. myself. Yeah. 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 And there were so many other people that appeared in the dream. Obviously, Jr. was there. Mm -hmm. And then he, he gives that revelation. Uh, we have Chasseur there as well. And she is, she's like a maniac. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she's kind she of like creepy. licking blood off her fingers. Yeah. And she, it, it was pretty interesting because with Chasseur and with Norman especially, it kind of brought out uh, what their characters were like it really accentuated it a lot more because mm -hmm. obviously Norman he's he's a psychiatrist and then Chasseur is like a hunter right she's she's a police officer mm -hmm. and she looked like a warrior in there and she had that whole spiel about the uh, the, the women don't have to be go through that rite of passage that the men do mm -hmm. right and she also has another line that uh, um, knights don't take king in, in chess Mm. The, the game of chess, which I thought was interesting because we see Roman a few episodes back, he said he always wanted to be a knight and, uh, and a warrior. And so and whatever he's trying to take down, it won't be him. And that's mm. actually that warrior mm -hmm. thing. That's actually what Peter said when they were hanging out in, uh, in Roman's house. So that was interesting that now Roman is saying it. Yeah, and I mm. for, I foreshadowed a few episodes back. <laughs> Warrior, that it would come <laughs> up again. Come up again. There it is. <laughs> Any significance, Lori, to the whole to the warrior theme? theme? No, I think it just goes back to. I feel like Roman's got this war within himself that he's trying to fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I thought it was just funny how there there was that scene again with with Norman and how he's like cutting the brain. Mm -hmm. He's like dissecting it, right? Yeah. I like that because we know that Norman Godfrey is a psychiatrist. He dis he dissects mm -hmm. the brain metaphorically, but now we're seeing the literal representation. Through the dream, mm -hmm. yes. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he was a lot more lighthearted during the dream, during the, the spiritual journey or whatever. And he was just funny in it, right? And he had like he the, the magnifying glass near his face and everything, mm -hmm. like flipping him upside down in a way. Mm -hmm. And then he's talking to this random Swedish doctor on, the, <laughs> on his MacBook. <laughs> and he even like leaned in and he was listening to him like, like you're whispering in my ear, doctor, <laughs> that kind of thing. And I liked how that doctor ended up saying something like, oh, it, it was so funny because he was saying so much, but then he was so vague at the same mm -hmm. time. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was talking about how the dragon was in the shadows and to look within himself and then, you know, to look at the landscape of the dream because that's where you'll find the clues to defeating the dragon. It was it was a lot. It it uh, went a little bit over my head. I had to rewatch that a couple times to I wrote that down too, and he had another one. His advice was too much of the animal dislocates the civilized human being, and too much culture makes an animal, makes a sick animal. Mm -hmm. So he's also talking about the mm -hmm. two yeah. parts of Roman. Yeah, that's like the struggle mm -hmm. that every, mm -hmm. every human has that struggle because we're, we are animals, right? Mm -hmm. And right. then if we try to be too logical, we separate ourselves from that passion, and then what, what, we don't feel anything yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, another funny line that that Swedish doctor had, I thought was, oh, I don't want to explain everything about blah, blah, blah. And then he said, the dragon representing self-fellatio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's the subject's own shadow and the most rep repressed of his inner thoughts mm -hmm. as well. So it's dragon not necessarily the physical animal that we're all used to, mm -hmm. but an actual more metaphorical sense. Mm -hmm. So fast forward in his spirit journey, and we get to see that he goes into his house, it looks like, right? His mansion. Yeah. And there's a wolf uh, attacking uh, Shelly, right? He hits the wolf. It turns to dust, which is, you, it, right now, just thinking about it, I'm like, you know what? Maybe the wolf is like, they're trying to find this Vargulf. Mm -hmm. It's like a scapegoat. It's not the real problem. Mm -hmm. That's probably why it's turning to dust, and it's just going poof because everybody else is like a monster, right? So he's he's there, Shelly's there first, then it turns into Ashley and she's naked. Very nice body. <laughs> <laughs> and then weirdly, 
she turns into his mother yeah. and she's grabbing his junk down south. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, and we've been talking about this, the whole incestuous relationships and mm -hmm. stuff going on, this whole, the whole theme about incest and stuff going on throughout this whole season. And uh, what, what are your thoughts on it, Lori? Yeah, incest is best. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> but you know what? We're all human beings, and um, it's just exploring all of that and our wants and desires, and as dark, t taking it to the nth degree, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And it was such a contrast because in the dream, his mom is doing that to him, but then it just it warps into what's going on in reality. He's in this coma and she's over him and she's like just caressing him in a very motherly, loving fashion, mm -hmm. unlike what we've seen before. Mm -hmm. Usually, you know, it's a little bit weird, it's a little bit creepy, mm -hmm. but with that, she it was really genuine looking and it's, it was really like non-incestuous. Yeah, and yeah. she she said the line. Fo she was too focused on being the man that he was. Roman was becoming than um, forgetting the boy that he still is. Mm -hmm. And there was also, and she also said, um, tightening her grip is more natural than letting go. So she do does realize that she does have faults. And um, that whole scene, it was very genuine. Like mm -hmm. very, this That's is the most good. emotional we've seen yeah. of Olivia really. Yeah, and yeah. The, his whole spirit journey pretty much like it. It takes the whole episode almost you know everybody else it's like kind of side stuff but what's going on with him i think even though it's confusing it's really like metaphoric symbolic it's it's very important even though a lot of it went over my head did you want to yeah. touch on him also seeing jr and yeah. what jr said oh yeah go ahead. like what he says that i knew i couldn't protect you from her she wouldn't let me he's basically mad because he you know killed himself and got mm -hmm. out of there but he's basically saying you know that she has all this control and he can't you know stop her um, and sh sh he t also tells Roman that half of Olivia is in him, and that's his only chance. So I feel like it's setting up this big fight against how he's going to be able to take her down or have control or power over her. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and, and also we see the whole situation at the school. Yeah. When with Roman's Lisa. there um, on the projector, mm -hmm. Roman's yeah, watching, watching this video <laughs> of Lisa yeah. at this fountain in a black dress. Dancing, dancing. beautiful dance, yeah. Yeah. ballet, yeah. And then we see Marie. Yes, and right you're just uh, evil tongue. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, Marie was dressed in like the same outfit that Letha was wearing on screen, right? Yes, mm -hmm. it's true. So that was really fascinating how it's like mirrored tied together. Yeah. And what She's, about? Can you talk to us about the line you yelled at him over and over? You paid your money. You yeah. paid your money. Yeah, I was paid your money. You paid your money. Your effing money. What were you money. saying? Yeah. <laughs> yep. you paid your money. Well, I think it goes back to. Um, the the thought that he might be the father of uh, of Letha's baby, that mm -hmm. he could be, and and your guilt that you're feeling, you paid your money, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but there was a lot of talk, there was a lot of discussion as to exactly what that meant. Oh, wow. <laughs> and <Yeah. laughs> sometimes we didn't always have the answers. <laughs> it's very ambiguous. Yeah, I couldn't figure that one out. I was like, I don't know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was interesting how Marie had a snake tongue mm -hmm. action thing going on. Mm. What's, what's Right, the what serpent, the, the, yeah. the devil, that, you mm -hmm. know, it's evil. You, you cross the line, you know, incest, the dark side. Right. And, and, and of course, it's tied in with watching the video of her. So, yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, the guilt. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I kind of researched um, snake tongue, and uh, s snakes have the uh, split tongue um, to, that has heightened abilities to identify prey, recognize kin, choose mates, and stuff. So I thought that was interesting why they chose snake tongue, too. Yes, obviously symbolism for evil, mm -hmm. but I wonder why mm -hmm. snake tongue. Uh, uh. Or maybe That's it's my evil side. That's what I was going finally to coming out. Yeah. The only time, yeah. <laughs> the only time we get to see Marie do something like that was remotely evil. Right. Yeah, that's what uh. kind of got me started on like, oh, maybe, maybe mm -hmm. there's a little bit more to Marie. She's been hiding kind of the first few episodes. You know, yeah. we see glimpses of glimpses. her here and there, but that was the first time I was like, oh, maybe she's a little badass mm -hmm. too. Mm. <laughs> Well, no, no. I'll, I'll tell you what is badass. Our fans <laughs> should go on to the iTunes store, type into the search bar, Hemlock Grove, and guess what? We are the first podcast to come up. And cool. uh, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, rate and comment us. Tell a friend. It only takes a minute. We got um, some comments on our YouTube channel as well this week I wanted to read out. 
Angels Virgo 95 said, I love Famke. She's such an amazing actress. <laughs> Yay. We love her too. <laughs> she was awesome. We do love her. She's yeah. great. <laughs> yes. And uh, Chris Wallace, he said, uh, why spend time watching Twilight and spend money on ridiculous transitions for wolf forms when you can watch Hemlock Grove with intense transformation, sex, and drug abuse? Laugh out loud. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Good stuff. And uh, we actually also had a tweet from mbird83, and she said, at Sean Austin O, thanks so much for asking, hashtag Famke Jansen, my question on this week's show. That was so cool. Awesome sh show as always, hashtag Hamlock Grove. Yay. Hey. Awesome. So thanks for joining the conversation, guys. And always tweet at us. You can tweet at me at Sean Austin O. I'm at Serafini TV. I'm at Tweet T22. And I'm at JJ Jurgens. And call in anytime. And, and where can, and tweet me? <laughs> where can we where, where can we tweet at you, Lori? I am at Lori Four T A. Four T A. Yes. <laughs> yes. So let's talk about uh, we're gonna talk about let's let's go ahead and jump into Chasseur, actually, because she I think she, what was revealed about her was really juicy. Mm -hmm. Or what she revealed rather. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I the most important thing that stuck out to me, uh, let, let's start off with the first thing. She's stepping over all of local law enforcement's <laughs> jurisdiction. <laughs> and she's she's pissing off Sheriff Sworn pretty much. Really badly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it, it, it's so funny because even though he doesn't seem to be the most competent law enforcement guy in the county, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he he's still the guy. He's the guy to go to. So obviously he can kick her out, he can do whatever he wants, you know. And I keep I, I think I brought this up last time. Is Chaucer actually a law enforcement officer? Is she actually an agent of wildlife and game? What, what do you think, Lori? Uh, you know, I I always felt like, she, no, like she wasn't. I To me, I mean, I don't think there's a, that we know for sure, but to me it always seemed like a front for her to, because how do you put a cover on the fact that you're hunting werewolves? <laughs> it's like the closest <laughs> thing that you could mm -hmm. use. Yeah, exactly. And it's mm -hmm. it seems to me, I think it's more apparent now, that this is probably a cover. Like, the, this whole thing, it's it's just a facade that she's using. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a very brilliant one because she's with, with the, what was it, the Order of the Dragon mm -hmm. and the bishops and high clergy within the Catholic Church, probably within the mm -hmm. Vatican, are planting all this info that's like a trail of breadcrumbs. Like, oh, yeah, Chaucer, she's a, she's a doctor of this, doctor of that. She's got all these credentials. She graduated from this academy, mm -hmm. probably. But she didn't. All she is yeah. is just a wolf hunter. Probably. Right. My question, too, is if she was part of Fish and Wildlife, does that give her the <laughs> right? Like, even if it was true, does she have the rights to go around doing law no. enforcement type things like she has been doing? I would say a big no. Yeah, because that was my thing. I was like, even if you really were yeah. a part of it, girl, like, kind of yeah. stepping out around, you're questioning minors without parents being around, mm. you're at the police impound or wherever yeah. they were looking at the inspecting the car before the police have had a chance to look it over no one at that point was asking you know where is the owner of this vehicle that we found abandoned somewhere they're just like oh it was on the side of the road and yeah but they all knew yeah. who yeah. it was they all knew yeah, it was you know who's who it is but. roman godfrey <laughs> right. but i think the badge just literally just gives her a little bit of validation so she has access to all these different mm -hmm. places that the local police enforce has access to mm -hmm. so i think she's just using it for that when she goes into the trailer and she and which is pretty crazy she is totally <laughs> trespassing no, no uh, warrant yeah no warrant <laughs> she's doing a, a she's doing it without a, a search and seizure warrant of any kind and she, she's in there they they see drugs the bishop comes in too he's playing around with the little vials right mm -hmm. but they're not after that and she reveals something really important in that scene, which is she's, she says that Price killed Francis. Did you guys catch, catch that? Yeah. Mm. That was very, that was intriguing. And remember last episode, we were mm. talking about this. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think yeah. he killed himself. Yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> it's something mm -hmm. that the bishop said, which I don't know if it plays into how she knew this fact, but he asked her, how is your sight picture? And I don't know what sight picture is, but mm. if she seems to know things about how people are dying that other people don't, I'm thinking maybe she sees visions of this or something 
I don't know. I haven't thought that one clearly out, but I thought it was interesting how he said, how's your mm -hmm. sight picture? No, that's interesting that you bring that up. <laughs> Tiana, but I think I was looking at it from a law enforcement perspective, mm -hmm. and he would, I think he was referring to the target that you have at the range. Yeah, the site, the target. That's what I thought oh, as well. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so when you, it's pretty much called the sight picture. It's like she's putting, you know, her sights of her barrel on it, and she's shooting and at she's it. Shooting. And the, because the whole beginning of the conversation, the first thing he says to her is, a Springfield? And I thought, at first, <laughs> I, at first I thought he said, Miss Springfield? <laughs> but, he, but then I turn on the captions, and I see a Springfield, like the weapon she's the using. Oh, okay. And then they go on to the whole long conversation. I thought I trained you to use a Remington, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay. But Chasseur also says that uh, Olivia took the Godfrey name in 1993, and she has no history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're, like, Olivia's backstory is quite the mystery, too. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen any of her family. Yeah, which her, people. Her, yeah, people. her people. Her yes, people, which J.R. brought up in Roman's mm -hmm. dream. Mm -hmm. It's like, don't you think it's strange you've never met anyone from your mother's family? Like, they know you exist. So it got um, brought up within... Romans, Catabasis, and within the real world, too. So there's something to her. There's some kind of fishy stuff going on with her background. And I think it was also in a flashback with, uh, with Norman and, um, and J.R., I forget which episode, but you remember this flashback yeah. where he's almost lost his mind and he's, he's brought the baby and um, he, he's like, she has no people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that was really mm -hmm. be beginning in the, in the season, Early right? on, yeah. It was, it was probably episode yeah. two or something like that, yeah. right? And that, see, that thing, like, I miss that. That's yeah. in my head. I really don't remember I that I think part. it was raining, <laughs> yeah. and it was all kind of crazy. Yeah, it was a crazy train that night. <laughs> They're bringing in Shelly's body because she's, There's like, body. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, like, oh, she's a, why, why did you do this? She's a monster now, or something like that, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy stuff, man. Uh, but I think there was something else with Shasir that I wanted to oh, talk about. Oh, um, it was that she was sent there to find an animal, but then... She, mm -hmm. she found a whole herd. Yes. So she was initially sent there to find this Vargolf or whatever is killing people. Um, I don't even think she knew it was called a Vargolf at the time. They probably just classified it as a werewolf within the Vatican or the Order of the Dragon, <laughs> whatever is her, her organization. Uh, but actually, what was really fascinating, too, another scene or another line that the bishop had was he quoted Dante's Inferno. Mm -hmm. And that is a story about catabasis. That's totally like Dante's journey to the underworld. And mm -hmm. he has Virgil, the bishop even said this, he has Virgil, Virgil. there who's his guide, right? Yep. And that's mm -hmm. exactly mirroring what's going on mm -hmm. with Roman in his catabasis, in mm -hmm. his coma yeah. right yeah. now with Shelley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but in the real world, the bishop is Virgil to Chasseur. And she's the one who's going through this underworld of all these monsters and creatures. So and, great. And it's <laughs> <No>. <laughs> so great. I'm just listening. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So insightful. <laughs> yeah, it just it just came to me. It came to me today. But uh, I just thought that was so fascinating, like all the parallels that are going on. A anything else, mm -hmm. Marissa? Oh no. Um, can we talk about Shasora meeting Olivia at her house? Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. That oh, was yeah. tension. <laughs> Very much. Mm -hmm. Is that where they meet out on the uh, back patio? Right, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which calls her the C word? Yes. yes. <laughs> that scene? Yeah. Oh. That's like cold. the worst. That's a worst. Not cold. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, 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 no. But that was cold. Yeah. <laughs> that, was the, that is seriously like the worst word that anybody can say to a woman. To, 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 you know, just to insult so them. It's, it's Especially so when one woman says it to another woman. Yeah. 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 It's pretty, yeah. pretty bad. Yeah, it's even worse that way. But uh, I thought it was so interesting to see the height difference between them two. <laughs> it really shows how short uh, Candace McClure really is. Compared oh, I don't to think Famke. she would like that. Let's delete that. We're going to edit that <laughs> out. <laughs> but Funk is really tall. So. Yeah. Yeah. She's really tall. Yeah, so we got to give her that, too. Yeah, but uh, that was an interesting scene, too, because it was very antagonistic. JJ? You know what? This is the only time, I guess, maybe I read, saw the scene differently, that I actually was more on Olivia's side. I kind of felt like Chaucer was sticking her nose in business when she needs to leave them mm -hmm. alone and have let them have time to, like, go through with, you know, the, their son, Roman's in a coma. And so, I don't know. I might have had a few words for her <laughs> <laughs> if that was in that situation as well, you know, just to get off my property and... Yeah, so I don't know. I kind of, the first time I kind of sided with Olivia in a scene. 
I see that because yeah. it's sort of coming out of her protective yeah. motherly instinct. Mm -hmm. Her son's in a coma. I totally see yeah. that. And you're literally invading her property. Yeah. And having all these accusations about discoveries at her mill. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I believe that too. <laughs> yeah. And then right afterwards, Peter shows up and he's got that little, the, what was it, Ganesh or whatever that idol was. And yeah. he gives it to Olivia. She takes it readily, which is nice. And uh, she even offers him to come in. Mm -hmm. He declines, he goes outside. Lita's there, your daughter. <laughs> and they like hang out and stuff. And who's there but Chasseur? Mm -hmm. She's on with the Godfrey property <laughs> taking her, photos. With her paparazzi oh, lens. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it was she's, massive. She has that for fishing yeah. game as well. <laughs> now she said something interesting. Uh, now I actually I could see yeah. how that would be used in fish and game, you know, like spotting birds. Yeah. <laughs> spotting wolves from like three hundred yards out or whatever. It's a pretty good front yeah. for yeah. Chasseur. Yeah. yeah. Um, but there was something, oh, she said something really interesting. You want to say it, Tiana? Oh, yeah. she said they're just children. They're, they're all, all just, just children. Mm -hmm. All. So what do you think that means? Which is also interesting because earlier in the episode, she also says we're all just animals. Yeah. So everyone's. Oh, and when she said that, that's what I was going to say about your line of multiple killers, because she says the line about um, how, you know, we're all just animals and there's been multiple killings around. So that's what kind of made me start thinking that maybe there's more than just one wolf. And maybe it's not even the wolf we're looking for at this point. And so that's what I was going to add to your statement earlier, Sean. Oh, I wanted, about I wanted to backtrack a little bit, actually, uh, regar regarding that thing. Mm -hmm. So we actually have uh, that Bishop is telling Chaucer pretty much just catch the wolf. I only sent you here for Peter. Get him. Don't get distracted by all this other stuff, right? He's being her guide. He's being her Virgil. But it's it's like we don't know if Peter's doing it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a total, it's like a scapegoat. He's like, okay, he's the one that's a wolf. He clearly changes into a werewolf. Mm -hmm. He's the only person other than Roman who we've seen that has, like, kind of powers maybe. So let's let's go get him. That's where I started to feel like the bishop might be kind of naughty. Like, I feel like he just has his eyes on that, and he's trying to set up something for his own intentions mm. in some sort of battle. And then I thought maybe that's where she meant, like, he sent her to hunt all these people, but they're actually just kids and just children. And so if she's bringing all these people to him and whatever might happen, or I don't know, I just got the sense that he's orchestrating something, and then these children are going to get sacrificed when really there is good in them and not just all evil. Good point. I guess that was my prediction. I <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Well, um, I don't. I think we're pretty much dry on the Chasseur topic, right? Let's. Mm -hmm. You want to talk about Norman and Olivia and what's mm. going on with them? So, Marie's <laughs> husband, Laurie, Marie's yes. husband, <laughs> Nor Norman is. He is really pulling away from her now, even though they had that really light-hearted scene. Yeah. Where they're mm -hmm. all joking around, like so. What, all right, I, I want to talk about that scene because I thought it was really funny and it, it was, uh, so how did you guys play that scene? Well, it was a nice scene to play because all the other scenes that are with our family, they're always so riddled with tension and there's always this tension with he and I. So mm -hmm. that was, it was a nice change Yeah, to have a light moment. Mm -hmm. And it's also interesting because that particular scene didn't really happen that way in the book because in the book, um, actually... Marie is actually upset with Letha because she finds out that Letha's been sleeping with uh, Peter. And then Norman comes into the scene, and then she he has to talk to Peter about sleeping with the man. Oh, so, okay, I think that actually comes in the next episode. Oh, episode right, 9, yeah, that's oh. where I discover her phone and right. that she's been, yeah, sleeping. Right. So I don't, I don't think mm -hmm. I know yet. So mm -hmm. the, the scene was a little bit different in the book. But like you were saying, Lori, it, w it only lasted for a moment. A moment. <laughs> yeah. In fact, when we were shooting it, we were all like, "How do we? What do we? How do we? <laughs> how are we playing this?" <laughs> because the dynamics are always, you know, there's always this tension with Roman and I. I mean, with uh, Norman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Roman. <laughs> how how is it working with uh, Duguay Scott in your scenes? Oh, like, it's fantastic. He's great. He's just a good guy. He's. Uh, he likes to joke around a lot, <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know we got to we got to play. It was good. Yeah, he seems like he's a pretty funny guy, <laughs> and I, I've loved him ever since uh, 
action movie, Mission Impossible 2. Oh, come on. Mm. It was Ever After. Ever yeah. After. Yeah. That's, 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 that's what the girls are yeah. thinking. Of course. Of course the girls are going to be saying that. You made my prince charming. <laughs> yeah. So it, getting back to Norman and Olivia, he ends up meeting up with her, what, three times in this episode? A lot. A few. <laughs> Quite yeah. a few times. They had the short scene at the school, at the house, and... At, at the end of the episode, and yeah, the third, yeah. that last one, he like there was no other thought on his mind. I mean, he didn't even look at Rome; <laughs> he just went straight in yeah. for it. Yeah, and it's almost like yeah. he's possessed. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Mm. Just like Jr. was mentioning, yeah. right? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Now let, let's <laughs> let, let's backtrack. Let's go that into was a hint. A, by the yeah, way, yeah, I can yeah. get that. Yeah. Yeah. Faces, we're like, oh, I heard <laughs> possessed in there. <laughs> Good choice of word. Yeah, <laughs> nice tea. <laughs> Uh, I want to backtrack a little bit to, to stuff that isn't on the show or hasn't been revealed. Okay, so how... All right, so we, we do see a little bit of a flashback where Norman is, a, is probably about to tell... It's, I think it's like 18 years oh, or something. Yeah. He's about mm -hmm. to tell Marie that he wants to probably be with Olivia, right? Yeah. And and then you, you say like, oh, we're pregnant. I oh. just find out that we're going to have a baby. Yeah, pregnancy, we're pregnant, and he can't, he doesn't have the heart. He can't do it. So so that's how long it's been going on yeah. for. Yeah. Our for, whole marriage. Yeah, mm -hmm. for, and how, and Letha's supposed to be how old? Like 17. Four, uh, she's 17. Yeah. yeah. So it's been going on for almost 18 years. Yeah, this, on and off. This whole affair. But yeah, mm. I know. Yeah. It's so sad, right? Jeez. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and she still hasn't rocked the boat. She hasn't asked that question in 17 years. Who, me? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. As Marie. Well, yes, as Marie. no, I, I have not. No, I have not. You know, it's like, you know, my backstory is that I came from, uh, I was the, the, my father worked in the steel mill, and you, you, this, I think, gets revealed in the next episode. But I came from real blue-collar background, and I married into the Godfrey and the mm -hmm. money and all of that. So I think mm -hmm. when you come from that, you know, you see the world in a different way, and you maybe make some choices and, you know, sort of are okay with things that, you know, because you know there's, it could be a lot worse. So, uh, you know, it was always an interesting quest question to play with as an actor. How much do I really know as I was playing the part? What hmm. is Marie's job right now? I, I, uh, I run the charitable arm of the uh, institute. Oh, so she does work for the Godfrey Institute. I do. She seems like yes. that kind of like a clerical, mm -hmm. but like really high up administrative kind of person. Yeah, I think it's more about just giving back for from for me for Marie, giving back to the community. I think in episode two I talk about how you know the, the I'm working on a, a project called the Breathe Project, and because uh, of all the damage that the town has imposed on you know the the taking away of jobs and the, the environmental p pollution alone from mm -hmm. the steel mill. So I think it's something that weighs on me. And I'm torn because that was my roots. You know, those were mm -hmm. my roots. So there's my conflict mm -hmm. right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's funny because there was that one scene, I think in the first maybe two or three episodes, where Marie's sitting down, she's like at the kitchen table or the dinner table, and she's a lot, she says, I can't remember the exact quote, but it's something like, Oh, that's why everybody in the town like thinks this way of the Godfreys. Right, it's going to take a lot of elbow grease to clean up the mess the Godfreys have made. You know what was really funny when when you said that as her, I was thinking, wait, does she have the Godfrey name? Does she have that as her last name? Why is she insulting the Godfreys? <laughs> uh, but it's because she married into you, it's yeah. Godfrey yeah. too. Yeah. Right, married into it, yeah. mm -hmm. like uh, like um, Olivia. Yeah. yeah, married into it. Only you guys have completely contrasting mm -hmm. like. Perspectives on life, I guess you want. Right. Say. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Completely. <laughs> but Mar Marie seems like the only really grounded person mm -hmm. that's trying to keep this, um, the Godfrey, Norman, and Letha family together, despite the fact that Olivia's kind of breaking it up. She's kind of the homewrecker in this whole mm -hmm. situation. But um, you're, you're a mother yourself, correct? Right. I am yeah. in real life. Right. Um, so, like, what kind of qualities? Being a mother, did you bring to Marie? Oh, well, because obviously, just the the obvious is I have two children, and mm -hmm. you know, to to 
that motherly instinct of you'll do anything to protect your family, your kids. Um, that's really, that's Marie, like like you say. she's. I really feel like Marie's sort of like the Mother Earth, sort of grounding all the, mm -hmm. all the characters, you know, around. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I was uh, looking at IMDb a little bit, and I saw that you were the Pasadena beauty pageant. <laughs> <Yeah, that's laughs> the, the rose, the rose, is it Rose Princess? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a big deal around here in LA. Uh, you right? know what? If you are from LA, which I am, it Ooh. actually is a big deal. Are you guys? Who's from LA? That would be me. Where are you from? <laughs> well, I'm from the suburbs, Upland. But okay. I, I, I know used to Upland. camp out for the Rose Bowl parade Did you every really? year. Yeah, we were the people sleeping on the streets waiting for the princesses to go by. Do you know by. what's so funny is I lived in, you know, Pasadena, and I never had e I had never seen a parade really? live yeah. until the one that I was actually in. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, you know, it's just one of those things when you're in high school and you're from here, mm -hmm. you, everybody tries out, and all my friends tried out, and I kept getting farther along in the, in the process. And, you know, uh, it's not just a beauty pageant, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Other attributes that were, you know, necessary. And uh, so, and then I ended up, you know, winning. <laughs> Me and, uh, so I guess I was a princess and then there was a queen. Um, but we had, we went on all these speaking engagements. So basically we represented the Pasadena Tournament of Roses um, to all of the cities and companies that had floats in the parade. So we would, I missed a lot of my senior year of high school, which was the fun part. <laughs> I, got to get, I got to get out of a lot of school. But anyway, yeah, it does haunt me. What did yeah. you have to do me. to beat the other girls? Did you have to do like, was there a special talent or? <laughs> like, like, like I got them drunk the night before and then they showed yeah, up hungover. Yeah. <laughs> That's the spirit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, no, it was just, it was a series of questions mm -hmm. about life and sort of like think of it like college essay type questions. Mm -hmm. And there was just multiple interviews and, you know, being able to stand and talk in front of people. I cannot believe that, really, I just can't believe that I got that far in it all. You know what? I just never mm -hmm. took it too seriously. I, I just always mm -hmm. went and had fun with it. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. sort of the goofball on the, uh, the court. Mm -hmm. But they're good girls, and I still keep in touch with them, and we have good laughs about it. And I kept my dress. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you can use that again. You never know. Um, were you already acting at that time, or had you started yet? No, were... I had not started, because that was when I was a senior in high school, and I, I had been acting in plays in high school, mm -hmm. but not professionally, not yet. Okay. I started when I went, got to college. So how'd you, how'd you get your start? in films or show business in general? Well, that was the thing. I went to college and then really, you know, just to appease my parents. Um, but I wasn't happy. I wanted to act. That was what I wanted to do my whole life. So I convinced them to, you know, <laughs> to cut out of college. I can't believe they did. But I moved back, I moved back down to L.A. And then soon after, I booked this Saturday morning TV series. It was called uh, Running the Halls. It was on NBC. Mm -hmm. It came on right after Saved by the Bell. And then I, I, so I've been doing it ever since, you know, it was uh, 13 episodes and uh, it's fun. Running the halls. That sounds yeah. like running the halls. It sounds like you're a, uh, a hall monitor checking <laughs> passes. <laughs> no, I was far from the hall monitor. <laughs> I was like the pol the party, the party girl. I played holiday Friedman. Um, <laughs> But it was a good show. It was, you know, it was a single camera, and at the time it was a little bit more savvy, I think, than, uh, you know, the the um, the multi-camera, you know, say by the bell look. But it didn't last. One season. So then I did other things after that. Kept telling my parents I would go back to college. <laughs> but they're I, still waiting for that to happen. Yeah, I, they, they're fine. They're they're over it now. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> they love me anyway. Yeah, you've done a lot of television appearances from CSI to Hemlock Grove now, obviously. Yeah. And I think I'm one of like 20 some actors that has done all three CSIs. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Look at you. Yeah. So, do you prefer doing comedy TV com as compared to a dark mystery like Hemlock Grove or in CSI? You know, I. Uh, I like comedy. I would love to do a single camera comedy. The thing of it is, is in this business, you know, people, once you start to do the one hour dramas, people begin to see you in that, in that way. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to um, shift their uh, perception of you. So, well, yeah. You know, you know what you got to do? You got to put that funny scene in this episode into your actor's <laughs> reel. <laughs> Which funny scene? <laughs> I don't think I have any funny scenes in this show. Yeah. 
But I mean, I think you did kind of get to test it out a little bit because I on um, IMDb stalking um, yeah. Franklin and Bash. Which, oh yeah. Re- speaking of Zach Morris and Saved by Love. <laughs> that's uh, a, there you go. I <laughs> there know. You go, right I, there. I um yeah, that's right. That's coming out. I think it's airing June. But that was fun. I did the season premiere for okay. epi- No, for season three, and um, that was light and. I had a fun time. And Brecken Meyer, who I had also done a pilot with uh, for NBC called Rocky Times. So he and I had worked together. This was maybe 10 years ago. It didn't get picked up. But um, yeah, so it was like we all knew each other. And hey, good to see you. And <laughs> it was fun. Uh, did I read correctly that you're married to one of the directors from Hemlock Grove? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no. no <you're> <laughs> Is that what attracted you to Hemlock Grove? Uh, yeah. <laughs> And maybe maybe that's why he was attracted <laughs> to Hamlet. <Hemlock>. Okay. <laughs> yes. I uh, Darren Serafian is my husband and uh that's we actually met years ago on a set. I was uh doing this series called Push. It was mm-hmm. for ABC and he came on and directed one of the uh episodes, which I don't think at the time he was happy about having to do. But he did anyway and um and there you have it. We've been married for thirteen years. Oh. Wow. That's amazing. It's legit. Yeah. Totally yeah, legit. That it really is. Um, <laughs> does he help you in your acting career, like with he, the choices you make? You know what? It's funny. Uh, we've tried rehearsing together, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it doesn't go over so well. But I have to say, he is hands down my favorite director. I love working with him. You know, I sort of fell in love with him first as a director, and also I feel like when you, the, the boundaries are clear, you know, I feel like I feel like when we're at home. I'm in charge. <laughs> Sorry, honey, if you're watching. <laughs> but, and I feel like when we're working together, I surrender, and he, you know, he does his thing, and um, it's great. He's he's really talented. That's great. Yeah. Does, does he ever come to you with like all these ideas brooding in his head? Do you he does. Give <laughs> input to his. Work? Yes. Yes. No. Is we actually have a very collaborative partnership in that way, and. Uh, yeah, we're definitely. And yes, to answer your question, yes, he does. He does help me, and it's also helpful to, as an actor, see what happens on the other side of mm-hmm. the business. And uh, so it's it's really an education, you know. Some stuff I don't want to know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. it's good to know everything though. Other than your character Marie, who is your favorite character on the show, and why? Well, I gotta go with Shelley. You know, mm-hmm. I got I mean, uh, heart wrenching, mm-hmm. heart wrenching. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, the story yeah. with Shelly, right? Do you know? We, well, we've been discussing it. It's, you, well, it's pretty much. Give us more. <laughs> yeah, give us some more. What, yeah. I'm tell trying us, not to spoil anything. Tell no. us your interpretation a, up until episode eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just it, it was a difficult char- a character to uh, to cast, you know, because you had to have this tall lumbering person so they they had a a a, a man pl- play uh play the part of the body so for all the wide shots were was this very tall uh lanky dude Michael Andre Yes Michael Andre and then uh when when they decided that they were going to you know want to do some close ups they they were really you know like how are we going to figure this out so they ended up um taking this extra uh, Nicole, and she had never really acted a day in her mm-hmm. life, and she, I feel like she steals the show. Wow. So oh, all wow. of the close-ups, you know, are, she just emotes so much with her, just her eyes. Yeah. And I love wow. the relationship <laughs> with her and, and Roman. It's, it's mm-hmm. so sweet. That's he really, he, he yeah. looks out for her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he really looks out for her and protects her. Like a true brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like they should do. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. What's your yeah. uh, favorite scene that you've had to shoot so far up until episode eight? Uh, up until oh, up until episode eight. Um, let's see. I think my favorite scenes come later, 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 later. Ooh, mm. well, tease. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think they come later. All right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't yeah, wait. To, <laughs> to look forward now, to. Mm-hmm. Now, compared to the, uh, the other characters, you um. You as Marie didn't spend as much time, obviously, on set. Um, but well, on how about this? On us, we didn't. We don't get to see as much of yes. Marie as compared to the other characters, yeah. actually. So, how much time did you spend shooting overall throughout the whole 
I guess, the whole time they were shooting Hemlock Grove? Well, we shot in Toronto, so I was there the whole time. But, uh, you know, again, my schedule was light, and some days I worked one day, and some days, I, some weeks I, sorry, some weeks I worked one day, and then some weeks it was three days. But, um, yeah, but I was there the, for all 13 episodes, and uh, Toronto's great. I had a mm -hmm. great time. Really, it's my people. <laughs> you know, my father is from Canada, so I felt <laughs> at home. <laughs> <laughs> Now, your character interacts with um, the adult actors and a lot of the young adult actors, too. What's, it, what's the difference between working with, like, Famke and Dugre compared to Penelope, Mitchell, and Bill? <laughs> yeah. They're old and she's young. <laughs> um, yeah, it was funny because there was sort of like two camps on set. You know, there was the the kids and then there was the adults, <laughs> and I was definitely more on the adult side. Um, but uh, yeah, there you know, there's something about youth and you know I still feel young. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, it's that's a tough question. I'm not. I'm just gonna end it with that. <laughs> you know, okay. before I put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> but the, you know, I got along great. I got along great with Penelope. She's lovely. She's so sweet and so wise beyond her years. Really. I mean, if I was mm. knew as much as I knew at her age, as I, you know, when I was that age, poof, yeah. I don't think I was that savvy in business-wise when I was younger. Oh, in she's the, savvy. Yeah, mm -hmm. she is. She's cool. a smart girl, yeah. Um, I was going to ask, because you've worked in, so much in television and Netflix is doing this new great thing, you know, with House of Cards and now Hemlock Grove, where they kind of have this new sort of platform for television shows. So I was going to ask, um, what are some of the differences in, probably some of like the you know the advantages in shooting a show the way that sh hemlock is shot versus the traditional tv formula for it yeah well in terms of knowing that we were going to do all 13 yeah yeah i think it gives the writers a sort of place to go and um yeah it's it's certainly an exciting time to be working for netflix and mm -hmm. and, and in this context it's, I feel like it's the wild, wild west, the pioneer days, new media, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. It really, to me, played like a 13-hour uh, independent film. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah. Did you guys at least score a free nuts? subscription? <laughs> <laughs> Is that actually, one of the benefits of actually working we for did. Netflix? <laughs> 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 nice. They splurged. I, yeah. 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 I wish we had some of that stock, too. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Seriously. Mm, it's nice. got, it's got, we talked about that on one of our previous podcasts. It went up so much within the last year. Right? It's amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's been really good. Do you think it's really going to start challenging the networks a lot now because of some that they'll be able to pull more more actors because they will know that they have 13 episodes they're going to shoot the whole thing instead of kind of leaving things up to ratings? Um, do you mean as far as uh, being more attractive to actors? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, yeah, because if you know if you you know some actors don't want to commit to to three to three years mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, right now it's it's just the season at a time. I think so. Mm -hmm. Could be more appealing. Yeah. I wanted to go ahead and wrap it up with the next couple of questions, and then we'll talk about our news and gossip for this week. Uh, what other projects are you working on right now or in the near future, and what can you tease at us to let us know where we can find you? Uh, well, like I said, we ha I have the Franklin and Bash coming out. I think it's June. It's in June sometime. That's the premiere episode, June 19. Correct? Yeah, June 19. Yeah. I wrote it down. I'm a fan of Franklin and Go, Bash. girl. <laughs> I was on that one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And, uh, you know, just out there uh, reading for more stuff and looking for more work. Yeah. Now, other than your Twitter, do you have maybe a website that our fans can go ahead and check out? No, and I am new to Twitter, so, uh, <laughs> but it's great. But, the, yeah, my Twitter handle is Lori, L-A-U-R-I-E, 4-T-A. So please feel free. I would love to uh, talk to fans and, yeah, answer any questions or anything. You hear that yeah. after Buzz? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, by the way, go Kings. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Yeah. <laughs> 
At least we have one team left in playoffs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? Bravo. Uh, I think I was reading Twitter a couple days ago that Darren was a big fan of LA Kings too. Yeah. Correct. Who, who got him into that? Uh, mm. The half Canadian yeah. over here. Who, who was the <laughs> hockey fan first? <laughs> yeah, we're actually we're going to the game on Thursday. So. Oh, nice. nice. Yeah. What are they at right now? I haven't checked. Are, is it still two one or? They are playing, they're playing right now. In yeah. home, what time right? is it? They're they're playing right now. They're playing um, in uh, L A. and they are playing the. Um, Oh, God. Sharks. The Sharks. Thank you. Right. San Jose Sharks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they are 2-1 in the series. Yes. The Sharks yes. won that last game mm -hmm. just by barely. Yeah. Over time. Yeah. Well, right. let's move into our news and gossip. Yeah, they just looked it up. It looks like Sharks are, it's 1-0. Sharks are winning right now. Um, yeah. is it, I think it's in San Jose, though. <laughs> is it in San Jose, the game? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is. Is it? Maybe it is. I think it is. Uh, HP Philly at San sure. Jose, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. So the game Thursday's in LA. So, yeah. Ah. Yeah. Awesome. After Buzz TV News. Thank you, Stephen. <laughs> So I got a couple of things to talk about. Anybody else have stuff? Uh, Marissa has some uh, things. Yeah, I, I looked up, uh, according to webpronews.com, season two release date is still unannounced, but highly likely. So I think we're all hoping for a season two over <laughs> yeah. here. Yes. Um, according to WebProNews.com, they said people seem to like the show, and but because it is a genre, a horror genre, there are a lot of mixed reviews compared to the House of Cards um, series that preceded the show. But they said it hasn't been the release date hasn't been announced yet. But it's hard to imagine the company killing one of the early cornerstones of original programming. So, and then Brian McGreevy is also working on the second novel, and the third one is fully um, outlined, I guess. So we are looking for book two and three. It is a series. It is continuing in that way. And we hope that the show also continues. So. And I'm sure, like, everybody's been saying, like, everybody who we've been interviewing, um, pretty much the the book is it's a companion to the show. So this, it gives you a lot more detail. So... Yeah, maybe so our, much more detail. Yeah, so maybe our AfterBuzz <laughs> fans can pick it up and support Hemlock Grove and Brian McGreevy. Read it. Mm -hmm. I'm excited read to read it after read I it. finish the series. <laughs> uh, I was checking out Instagram and seeing what's in the Twitter sphere as well, and uh, I'm following Freya Tingley, and you can find her on Instagram at, uh, Fre at Freya Tingley, and she is as a couple of as of a couple of days ago, she is in London. It looks like because uh, she's got some. Uh, she's posted some pics of. Big Ben over there, oh, so people can check Freya. that out. Yeah, and uh, she was so awesome to have on this yeah, show. She's so great. Yeah. I know. I love Freya. Yeah, did you have a lot of scenes when you were with her? I did. No, she and I did not. But uh, she, she, her, and I have hung out a couple times here in LA, and um, she's lovely. Great, and that's so awesome that she lives. Here too. She's you guys, here now. Yeah, you yeah, guys should here. both come back to After Buzz Studios more often. Yeah. Because <laughs> we, we love having you here. Uh, thanks. I love being here. I love your show, guys. Oh, thanks, thanks, for, yeah. thanks for taking thanks. the time to, you know, to have such great insight on our show, <laughs> <laughs> which can be confusing at times. But um, it's great. Well, thank yeah, you. Thank you. Uh, also, I was checking out the at Netflix Twitter account. And they had some really funny uh, just graphics that were on there. And I don't know if they did some actual surveys, but there's one twit pic that's up. And it shows uh, men and women symbols, you know, like the ones you see on the bathrooms. And uh, <laughs> it says on, on the top, men are more likely to watch ahead. And it has the men symbol, 77% underneath it, and 57% of women like to watch ahead. And this is ahead of their partners who like, they, watch, <laughs> they watch with. They will like watch the show with. Oh. Yes. Oh. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Clever. That's a fight starter. I'm you not can't, a man. You can't, if you're in a relationship, <laughs> you can't watch ahead. Yeah, it really is, it isn't is, it? Yeah. yeah. How dare you watch? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Or a movie, too. It's the yeah. same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, true that. <laughs> Let's move on to oh, our... Well, oh, well, oh, we well, have something else? Sorry. sorry um, I more. also forgot that the... Um, there are the reviews for Hemlock Grove on Netflix, they're up to 300. The last time I checked, they're up to 363,802 reviews. Wow. All pretty positive reviews. And um, considering the show has only been out for a month compared to House of Cards, great. which has been out for like three to four. Um, so Netflix is on the up and up. That's great. Yeah. yeah. It's really exciting. Yeah. I'm very excited for it. Prediction time. And now... Your After Buzz TV predictions. predictions. Yes. 
I don't even know where to start. <laughs> well, well, let me start. <laughs> so um, I think Marie is going to find out that Norman is seeing Olivia next episode, and it's going to be confirmed. Because, come on, she, he went, he went yeah. by the house. And I know he's, like, got stuff going on, you know, and it, obviously Marie can see that. But he just drove away, and Olivia's been calling him more frequently. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I feel like she's. I feel like Marie's gonna find out next episode. Marissa, oh, you can't. Um, you can't give any. Can't. <laughs> uh, Tiana. Um, I. I don't even know. Ooh, <laughs> I don't even know because there's so many storylines happening that I want to. I can't think of. Yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> JJ, go, and I'm gonna get my thoughts I kinda, together. I kind of gave mine out earlier about the priest. But right. I just thought he yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another reference to a bird in this episode, morning dove, that when mm -hmm. Olivia's, mm -hmm. uh, she wants Roman to wake up to the sound mm. of a morning dove, and so in the past few episodes we noticed references to birds and mm -hmm. uh, the symbolism of morning doves. There's a lot of different ones that can be the Holy Spirit. In the baptism, which is spiritual rebirth and cleansing of original sin, and then there's Noah's Ark, which is um, there for new beginnings and great expect expectations, and then also um, dove is just usually the symbol of peace. So, um, just another little mm -hmm. bird reference. Okay, I got a I got a prediction now. Do it. <laughs> okay. Hang on, wait, I forgot it. <laughs> <laughs> I predict that we'll see yeah. some of Lori's favorite scenes that she's in in the next ah, episode. Yeah. 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 And you'll yeah. have to guess which ones are my favorite. <laughs> I'm we'll tweet at you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to predict that Letha's baby, no, not. I'm not going to go that route, Chaucer. The bishop is not happy with her not bringing her, him Peter, so I think he's going to bring in more reinforcements. Mm. And maybe we'll meet her twin brother, because ah. she did make a reference to a twin out there somewhere. Mm. So I still want to see him. Yes, there's that's my right. prediction. Oh, that's a good one. I really like that, Tiana. Thank you. I feel like Roman will wake up from his coma next time, because there's no way we can have him. Come on, we can't yeah. have him yeah. in a yeah. coma for two episodes. <laughs> I, I need the bromance to be back yeah. on the guys. I need <laughs> Peter and Roman back together, because the bromance is awesome. <laughs> did you notice that Chaucer even said, well, the Hardy Boys get back together? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I you're gonna bring that up. I want to see a little romantic music video with those two <laughs> scenes like cut together, oh. like a good song. I'm sure it's on fun. YouTube somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so it. funny. And, um, I feel, I, you know, getting back to that same thing, I feel like Peter is going to be there for him when he wakes up, and they're going to they're gonna make up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or so. make out. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So that, this was such a great episode. Yeah. I wanted to say, you know, from all of us at After Buzz, thank you, Laurie Fortier, for thank joining you. us. Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I really appreciate it, and it was fun. Thanks for having me. You, you brought such great fun. insight into, into Marie and a better understanding of some of the other characters on the show and the actors you work with so again thank you so much mm -hmm. um if uh before you know we'll, we'll see you guys next week but if you guys want to follow any of us you can follow me once again at sean austin o i'm at seraphini tv i'm at tweet t22 and i'm at jj jorgens and once again Lori. i'm at Lori for ta all right <laughs> well we'll see you guys uh oh did you and, and also some? next week we have darren Serapian coming oh, in. Oh, <laughs> and nice. we have Joel De La Fuente calling in also. Oh, who Joel's plays great. Dr. Price. So that'll be next week. Very cool. Well, we'll buzz with you guys next week. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.